Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to see about storage events trigger in Azure Data Factory. This is also known as blob triggers in Azure Data Factory. So this is the part eight of the Azure Data Factory tutorials playlist. So if you're new to this channel, I would strongly recommend to watch all the other videos in this Azure Data Factory playlist before watching this video. Okay, so now let's get started. So in the last video of this playlist, we have seen about how to create a schedule trigger for a pipeline. In that video, we have configured a schedule trigger to run the pipeline every five minutes. So one of the key difference between the schedule trigger and the storage events trigger is, in schedule trigger, the pipeline triggers every time based on the schedule configured on the trigger. Whereas in the storage events trigger, the pipeline gets triggered only when there is a event occurs in the storage. Say for example, you have a copy data pipeline where you want to copy a CSV file from the Azure Data Lake Storage N2. So in this scenario, you can create a storage events trigger on the copy data pipeline. So whenever there is a CSV file that has been uploaded into the Azure Data Lake Storage N2, it will instantly trigger the copy data pipeline to copy the newly uploaded CSV file from source to the destination. So this is called storage events trigger in Azure Data Factory. So the trigger of this pipeline will occur automatically as soon as the CSV file has been uploaded to the Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2. Okay, so now let's go to the Azure Data Factory Studio and let's see how we can configure a storage events trigger to a pipeline in a demo. Okay, so now I'm inside the Azure Data Factory Studio. As you can see here, this is the pipeline that we have used in the last video to create a schedule trigger. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to create a storage events trigger for this pipeline. So instead of updating the trigger in the same pipeline, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to click on this three dot and going to click on this clone button over there so that I can create an exact copy of that pipeline. So in this way, we are not actually touching the other pipeline and just working on this. So firstly, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to rename this pipeline. So I'm going to give a name called copy pipeline blob trigger. So just a meaningful name for identifying this pipeline easily. Okay, so now we have updated the name of the pipeline. So now what we can do is, let's configure the trigger for this pipeline. So for that, I'm just going to click on this add trigger button over there. So once you click on that, you'll be finding an option called new slash edit. And if you click on that, you'll be seeing something called choose trigger. As you can see here, we have already created a schedule trigger, but we want to create a new trigger for this storage events trigger. So for that, I'm just going to click on this new button. And once you click on that, you'll be finding an option to create a new trigger. So firstly, let us give the name for the trigger as blob underscore trigger. And after giving the name, we have to fill in the description, which is optional. So I'm just going to skip it. So after that, we have a drop down to select the type of the trigger. So we have already created the schedule trigger. So this time we need to choose the storage events trigger. So after choosing the trigger type, now we need to select the storage account that we are going to use in this trigger. So we already have two storage accounts. So one is the source data lake and the other one is the destination data lake. So in the source data lake, as you can see here, we have these two files and we have copied these two files into this destination data lake using the Azure Data Factory pipelines in the previous videos. So now what we are going to do is we need to specify this source data lake into the storage events trigger. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to select the Azure subscription first over here. And after selecting the subscription, we need to choose the storage account name. So this time we are going to choose the source Mr. K data lake. And after selecting the storage account that we are going to use for this trigger, now we need to specify the container name in the storage account. So as you can see here in the source data lake, I have a container named source. So let's copy this source container name and we need to put in there. But before putting in there, we need to put in a format with two slashes. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to type two slash and I'm just going to paste the container name in between these two slashes. So this is the format we need to follow to specify the container name. And after that, now we have two options. One is blob path begins with and the other one is blob path ends with. So what these two options means is the pipeline will get triggered if it satisfies the path specified in these two options. Say for example, in the blob path begins with, as you can see here, if the path begins with 2018, then this pipeline will get triggered. On the other hand, in the blob path ends with option, say for example, if you're uploading a CSV file, so if the file name is ends with .csv, then this pipeline will get triggered. So in this demo, what we are going to do is, we are going to upload a CSV file in the source storage account 
inside the source container. So as you can see here, this is a file I'm going to upload. And if you see the file name, it ends with .csv, right? So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to specify the blog path ends with, with .csv. So as you can see here, if you put .csv over here, and when we upload the test file into the source storage account, since its file name is ends with .csv, then this pipeline will get triggered. So that's the idea of these two path options. So once that is done, now we have an important option called event. So we have two options over here. One is blob created and the other one is blob deleted. So what is meant by blob created is, so when we specify this option, so whenever there is a new file upload that happens into the blob, this pipeline will get triggered because uploading is kind of creating the blob, right? So on the other hand, we have an option called blob deleted. So in this case, when we actually delete a file from the blob storage account, this pipeline will get triggered. So in this demo, we are just going to upload a new file. So I'm just going to go with the blob created option. And the next option we have is ignore empty blobs. So as you can see here, the default option is yes. So when we specify yes for this trigger, so what will happen is this pipeline will not get triggered when the uploaded file is having zero bytes. So let's go with the default yes option. So the next option is the annotation. So this is the optional one, which is mainly used to, to identify the triggers easily. So we can skip this for now. And finally, we have the start trigger option. So as you can see here, the start trigger on creation checkbox is enabled. So what this means is when we actually create this trigger, this trigger will be automatically enabled. So we don't want to manually enable it. So let's go with the default option. And as you can see here, we have given all the necessary details for creating this trigger. So now let's go ahead and click continue. So as you can see here, we are seeing two files that has been matched based on the settings that we have configured. As you can see here, these are the two files that we have in the source data lake. And we have an option in the top which specifies ends with .csv and two blobs matched with the same condition in the source. So as discussed before, to test the storage events trigger, we are going to upload a CSV file with a file name that ends with .csv. So based on the results that we are seeing here, we have configured the triggers correctly for our testing. Now let's go ahead and click on continue and click on OK over here. So now we have successfully created the blob trigger for this pipeline. So let's publish the changes now. So I'm just going to click on this publish all button and hit publish here. So as you can see here, the publish has been completed. So what we are going to do now is we need to do one additional changes to this pipeline. So if you remember something in the beginning of this video, we cloned this pipeline from the copy from scratch pipeline, right? So for example, if I go to this copy data activity and if I go to the source and open the data set, and in the data set, as you can see here in the file path, we have explicitly given the file name called scheduletrigger.csv. So in the last video, when we actually created the schedule trigger for this pipeline, we just explicitly defined the file name in the file path to copy the files. So if I just go to the source data lake, as you can see here, we copied just this file, which is the scheduletrigger.csv from the source to the destination as part of our testing but we don't want to do the same for this blob trigger. So what I mean by that is we are just going to upload a file called test blob trigger.csv and test the pipelines, right? But we don't want to specifically give the same name in the file path. Instead, we need to dynamically get the file name and passed as a parameter over here. By doing in this way, any file that is uploaded into the blob storage account with a file name that ends with .csv will be copied from source to the destination by the pipeline. So for that, what I'm going to do now is, I'm just going to remove the file name from the file path. And after removing the file name over here, I need to get the file name from the trigger and pass as a parameter inside this file name option. So let's see how we can do that. So for that, what I'm going to do now is, I'm just going to the pipeline. And firstly, I'm going to create a parameter. So if I click on this white space over here, you'll be seeing something called parameters in the bottom. We need to create a new parameters over here. So for that, what I'm going to do now is, I'm just going to click on this new button over there. So after clicking this new button, you can give the name of the parameter. So I'm going to give a name called file underscore name. So now we have created the parameter. So this parameter is going to get the value from the trigger. 
So, what I mean by that is for example, if I click on this trigger and click on this new slash edit inside that you can see the blob triggers that we have created recently. So, as you can see here in the right side, we have an option called parameters. So, I am just going to click on this edit parameters option. You can now see the parameters called file underscore name that we have created recently. In the value text box, we need to specify a code that will get the file name of the file that is uploaded into the blob storage account. Let me directly paste the code in here. So, as you can see here, the code is our trigger body dot file name. So, this is the inbuilt code of the Azure Data Factory expression, which will retrieve the file name of the file that triggers this pipeline. So, what will happen now is when we actually upload a file into the blob storage account, it will trigger this pipeline, right? So, while triggering this pipeline, it will get the file name of the file and that file name will be passed as a parameter in here. So, let us click on this OK button now. So, now what we have done so far is we have created a pipeline parameters called file underscore name and this parameter is going to get the file name from the trigger. Now, we need to pass this parameter into the file name section in the source data set. But instead of passing the pipeline parameter to this file name section over here, what we can do is we can create a separate parameter for this source data set and pass the data set parameter to this file name section. So, what I am going to do now is I am just going to the parameter section. So, this is the parameters of the source data set. So, I am just going to click on this new button over here and I am going to create a new parameter called file underscore name. So, one thing to note here is this is the parameter of the source data set which is different to the parameters that we have created earlier. So, to differentiate this what I am going to do is I am just going to rename this parameter name to file underscore name underscore ds which stands for data set. So, this data set parameter is going to get the value from the pipeline parameters that we have created earlier. So, if I go to the pipelines as you can see here now we can see the file name underscore ds parameter in here. So, the value of this data set parameter should be got from the pipeline parameter that we have created earlier. So, this pipeline parameter file underscore name is getting the value from the trigger that we have seen earlier. So, that is the flow. So, now what I am going to do is I am just going to the copy data activity and in the source data set parameter I am just going to use this add dynamic content to pass the value. So, here I am just going to select the file underscore name which is the pipeline parameter. So, this will get the value from the file underscore name parameter and assign that into the file underscore name underscore ds parameter. So, now what we have to do is we need to go to the source data set. So, for that I am just going to open the data set and inside that I am just going to the connection and in the file name what I am going to do is I am just going to click on this add dynamic content and this time I am just going to choose the data set parameter which is file underscore name underscore ds. So, after selecting that I am just going to click on ok. So, now the file name will be passed to this file path to perform the copy data activity. So, now we have configured everything for this pipeline. So, what we can do now is we can hit publish all button to publish all the changes. So, as you can see here the publish is completed now. So, what I am going to do is I am just going to test this pipeline. So, firstly let us close all these tabs and I am just going to the monitor tab. As you can see here there is no logs in here currently. So, what we can do now is we can go to the source storage account and inside the source container we can upload the test file that we have to test this blob trigger pipelines. So, I am just clicking on this upload button and I am just going to drag and drop this test blob trigger.csv file in here. So, as soon as I hit this upload button and the file gets uploaded, the pipeline will get triggered. So, let us go to the Azure Data Factory Studio and hit refresh. So, as you can see here the pipeline is started. So, you can see the triggered by is blob trigger and if I just click on this pipeline name, you can see that the copy data activity is running. So, what this copy activity will do is it will get the file name from the trigger and it will pass into the copy data activity to copy the file from the source to the destination. So, let us hit on this refresh as you can see here the pipeline is completed now. So, what I will do now is I will go to the destination storage account and inside this disk container I am just going to hit refresh. So, as you can see here the new file has been copied now which means that the blob trigger is working as expected. So, this is how we can configure the blob trigger in Azure Data Factory.
I think now you have an idea about how to configure a blob trigger in Azure Data Factory. So in the next video, we can explore the other trigger types. So that's it for today. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe and see you in another great video. Until then, cheers. Bye.